and check out franchise mode. I think that there's a lot of fun to be had here, and I'm going to be doing a franchise series on this game, but I have some questions about some of the more specifics, like what, uh... What kind of team should I do? We know it's going to be a rebuild of some sort, but also, um, what am I going to do as far as, like, season length? Because that's variable. Um, how bad should my team be to start out? Keep in mind, you can sign and release players. So, you know, if you go in with, like, the worst team ever, you can always sign good free agents. So they're going to have, uh, it's, they've talked about doing a team import feature from Super Mega Baseball 2. And if that comes out in a timely fashion, then I'd love to import my custom teams from the last game. But we're definitely going to be doing, um, new team, some new faces. You can count on Demario Waddle being there and maybe some players from like the Bucks franchise and some others that have come up over the the past couple of years but uh i'm trying to think of like for a season length you can go from 16 to 200 now i've always done 16 because it's simple to get through all the games but i'm thinking maybe a longer season with some simulating the only issue i have with that is that uh i don't think there are box scores so if I were to sim a game, I'd have to do it like this. And I wouldn't necessarily have a great idea of how that game flowed. I'd have to check my stats and just see how they change. But as far as box scores go, I don't think there are box scores in Franchise. There are a couple things I'd like to see added to this. The box scores for one, but also maybe a player card with their stats and teams they were on over the years. That would be a nice touch. Kevon DeVoe is DH. Desmond Payne or Jordan Starks. Leon Sandcastle. There's an old reference. Was that Madden 12 before that draft? Enter into the game, then sim. Hmm, let me test that out quick. You better have Tank Tucker. Sports Fan 98. Perhaps it's time for the Tank to make his return. Madden 25? Really? You know what? I think I can picture it with that card art now. That was back when I actually played Ultimate Team. Alright, so let me test out something then. If I just say I wanted to sim this game. Because you can simulate a game once you've started it. I should be able to sim it and then check the box score and exit out. That is, uh, not 200 IQ, but it's definitely like 168. Who do I think was the worst bust out of all my series? I mean, Adam Kane takes the cake. I messed up. And I haven't missed like that very often. Hey, Wyatt, appreciate the super chat. What's the ego system for? So the ego system in this game is their difficulty. It ranges from, I think, 1 to 99. You can also um, adjust the ego depending on what part of the game you uh, want. So say you pick up hitting really, really easily but not pitching, you can play on like a higher hitting ego than pitching ego if you want. I'm gonna kill the music here and get uh some audio from the game let me know if it's too quiet or too loud i haven't streamed at this one before so you'll notice also in franchise oh there's always been separate egos i have uh messed with that in the past I think I play on a higher pitching ego than hitting ego personally. I forget how you do it individually, but I'll try to show you afterwards.
I'm playing on 65 right now just because it's been a little while since I've played. Let me uh, boost some of the audio here. Oh, of course I remember Aaron Higdon. But you'll notice too that players have traits. And I talked about this in my video. The traits are really cool. Because say, Cat Stanza here. Outside pitch. Power and contact boost when targeting the outside half of the strike zone. So you can take your reticle here early in the count. When you're sitting on your pitch and waiting for it. You can just hang out here. And that's something I've never really done before in this game. I always just look for the middle of the plate and adjust based on that. But uh, with the traits, now you have a few more things to think about. They also have some hitters who get a boost against, you know, lefties or righties. They also have some negative traits. So there are some hitters that when in a two-strike count, their contact goes down by 25. So with them... You know that you really don't want to see a two-strike count. You want to hit the home run, though. Damian Rush. I couldn't hit with him before. That's a big one. William Lindsley. Oh, yes. Perfect. Perfect. William Lindsley. My face is covering the info. My bad. When it pops up again, I will toggle it off. All right. Um, I wanted to test something, though. So, let's say I wanted to simulate games here. Oh, it returns me to the hub to do it. Okay. If I sim to the end. Any ideas or tips to have fun in a rebuild? Um... I mean, it depends on the sport. If you're talking baseball, I mean, you can have a team that's built around contact, a team that's built around power, pitching, or defense. Um, you can try to go with, like, a money ball approach and only use a certain amount of funds and try to just put that extra pressure on you. Game results. Let me see that one. Alright, so that uh, shows up like that. So if I do any simulating, I won't be able to see box score stats, unfortunately. <clears throat> yeah, you could definitely do a money ball approach in this game. What is the sim speed for the games? It's really fast. If you just hit square, it sims them all. If I were to... Uh, I'll show you a full week of simming, but I think over multiple weeks even, it's just instant. Or near instant. It slows it down so you can see the scoring if you want. But otherwise, if I'm going to sim a bunch of CPU games here, I guess it's only one. How many games the sim? It keeps doing one at one at a time. Oh, simulate CPU games. All right, six games here to sim. And once it gets that going, you just hit square and they're all done. Very quick. Ian, appreciate the super chat. We need a Patrick Big Papa comeback. Uh, was he in the Super Mega Baseball 2 at all? Might not have made it there. Let me play an actual game now. Or actually, why don't we check out some of the player development and uh, signing and releasing. I've simmed through multiple seasons here. And I have uh, accumulated a bunch of funds. Now one thing I've noticed with player development funds is uh, they carry over from year to year. So you can save them. But basically, I've simmed uh, three years, and here's a look at my economy. So the budget is $140 million. I'm not quite there, so I have a good surplus. And that surplus is divided every week, and I get that uh, in player development funds after each game. So when you go to player development, you have all these options here, and they'll change over the course of the year, and some can expire. 
So here we have Miguel Duke, Teeth Whitening. His expiration odds are 94% after our next game. So if I don't buy that, it's going to have a 94% chance of going, which means it's pretty much gone. Any tips for commentating on your series? I'm trying to do a franchise and tried to commentate during the recording, but it didn't work that well. I mean, the first time I ever tried it, I wasn't very good, and I'm still, you know, trying to get better at certain aspects of it. It really takes practice, but um, maybe, like, what helped me was paying a lot more attention when I was watching actual sports broadcasts, trying to pick up on different mannerisms and um, their overall approach on a play-by-play -play basis, you know, what details are they trying to communicate? What are they ignoring? Um, how do they set plays up? You know, there's so many little things that go into it. And um, all I can say is reps and practice are the only way that I know to get better. All right. So we have some of these player development tasks here. Let's mess around... Uh, Miguel Duke. Actually, I want to make a couple signings because I might actually end up releasing somebody. So, the free agents are often pretty good. And it's just a matter of making their salaries fit. So, for instance, if I wanted Matthias Fernandez here, I just need to fit that $8.9 million salary... And my roster is full, so I need to choose who I drop in order to sign him. So, what does he play? First base? I don't want to drop Cat Stanza. Let's go somebody else. Johnny Bags. Let's sign Johnny Bags here. Switch hitter, 66 power, 71 contact, 70 speed. Just can't field very well. Let's drop an outfielder here. Let's drop Filet Jones. So it shows you your surplus beforehand and after. The surplus is just your difference between the budget and your team payroll. And the less surplus you have, the less you get on a weekly basis for player development. And this is, you know, just the comparison. Did pay a bit more to add him to the team. Who else should I sign here? This team doesn't have a lot of contact, so it's kind of fun to add more contact hitters just to balance it out a bit. Jose Carloco. He is just a DH. Zero fielding, 14 arm. Now, DHs are in this game. I'm not sure if this league is playing with a DH. If I go to my team, I can set my lineups, but it's based on DH or not. I feel like we're definitely playing with a DH in this one. Big Smoke. Appreciate it. Physical version for Switch? Prefer it versus digital? I don't think Super Mega Baseball has ever had a physical version. If they did, I imagine it would have been uh, linked for pre-order. So I think it's all uh, digital. Snow Runner. You know, one of my friends... Told me he wanted to play SnowRunner with me. He told me to go buy it. I checked out a couple videos. It looks like fun. Can you customize your manager? Um, no. Cannot customize that. But you can customize... Um, beforehand, you can customize the team, the logo, and the stadium. I can't customize the stadium, but you can choose the stadium. And I think they're like... 14 or so stadiums in game so if i go to my team how do i edit can i edit stadiums from in here i forget there is a spot but i haven't messed with it but i really like oh here it is home park apple field so apple field Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen stadiums in this game. I think there are a couple new ones in all of the uh, stadiums prior. So, 
Where is the new player I signed? Where is he? Johnny Bags. Here's the player customization. You can go random look and random name if you want to randomize it for whatever reason. You cannot change their throwing hand or batting hand. Now, at the main menu when you're creating teams and players, that's where you get the freedom. But inside a franchise, that along with ratings are the things that you can't change. But as far as appearance goes, there are a lot of options here. And I know the chat loves their customization. We get to the end of uh, offseason and dynasty and it's all most of you can talk about. I think there are a lot of uh, good options here for player customization. Let's give him a... Uh... Where are the gloves? I see wrist, cleats, tattoos... Where do they have, uh, oh, it's gear. Batting gloves. Kind of like those. Oh, cool. And it can, uh, cycle through your swatches like that. That's neat. Yeah, the customization is really cool. If that's what you're into and you want to fully deck out your team and league, that's where it's really strong. Yeah, Blackjack, the customization would fit him perfectly. What else can we do here? Here are some of the cheaper players now. If you wanted to just go full on development. Now, cheaper players are also sometimes older. Because they may opt to leave your team after a year or retire. Now, you don't sign players to like multi-year contracts in here. It's just older players may opt for free agency or retire. But if I wanted somebody really young, all the rookies are already uh, signed. So the youngest player is 23 years old and then just one 24-year-old. So it looks like the CPU teams do care a lot about uh, developing Steven York, Wilfred Corona, contact, speed, let's sign him. Does this game have regression with age and or stats? I don't know if it's based at all on play. If not, that's one area where the game needs a bit more depth. I think that... Uh, you know, having performance-based progression and performance-based regression is important. But players will go up and down based on uh, age. So here's an example. Madoka Hayata's shoulder goes down. Loss of five on her arm. She's 34. Shady at 27. Losing a little bit of the accuracy. Nothing too worrisome. Elleroids at 29 actually got a little bit better. I have no idea if any of this is related to, like, stats. I haven't tested enough in depth to, like, see. But ratings will change based on age and your development opportunities. So, let's see. I want to buy a couple of these so I can get them replaced with new ones. Let's go Manny K's here. Now... A lot of these give you a chance at different boosts. This one gives you a guaranteed plus one fielding, minus four velocity, and plus six junk with a 15% chance to gain Compose, which is a trait. I do not know exactly what Compose does. But you also have ones like this, where you're guaranteed that plus five power, but you have a 15% chance at getting plus 15. And a 5% chance to get power versus right-handed pitchers. So there is a lot of randomness here with the development. And that might not be for everybody. I like a little bit of randomness and a bit of uh, performance. This one definitely is geared more towards the randomness, I feel. But there's still age and salaries to talk about. So 
I think it's a cool system for this game. So I didn't get lucky with either one of those rolls. So I purchased those two and new ones have a chance to pop up after my next game. Let's try this one for mixed steel. 15% chance. Didn't get it. 5% did not get it. So part of this mode is really the strategy with your player development funds. What do you try to get here? Do you go for a bunch of these upgrades that could give you big boosts if you're lucky? I'm not sure if those ones end up being more expensive. I'm not exactly sure what determines the price of an upgrade. I'm guessing just the more possibilities, the greater the price could be. Can you do a full league control in franchise? So, there isn't like the ability to control multiple teams. Can you customize other teams? I believe so. But as far as like playing as other teams, no. But if I wanted to go to the wide loads here, change up their uniform, edit their players, it looks like I can do that no problem. Also, you are able to watch CPU games. So, back at the main menu, if I wanted to... I'm pretty sure you can watch the CPU games. Because I know it pops up in like the postseason. Let me simulate mine quick. Online franchise? I don't believe there's online franchise in this one. Oh, 19 runs. Alright. Watch the CPU play the next game. So it'd be Crocodons and Bee Wolves. How do I cycle through those? I think I just simulate. Say I don't want to watch that one. That one's over. Now I could watch the moose in the hot corners. Would you like to watch a CPU play? So, no full league control, but there's some flexibility. Yep, gonna check on the super chat quick. Just wanted to finish up that thought. Appreciate it, guys. Randy, appreciate it. If you have a PS4 cane, you can import your teams from Super Mega Baseball 2. Go to Customize Teams, and it'll have an option to import Oh, was that actually uh, in the latest patch? Because if so, that's a big deal. And that'll impact the timetable on me messing with this. Thank you for the super chat and the heads up. When am I going to stream head coach again? At the latest tomorrow night. Otherwise, uh, maybe tomorrow afternoon if I have a shot. But probably tomorrow night. <clears throat> Let me check something quick. Wow. Yeah, it does work. It works very easily. Import from Super Mega Baseball 2. They're all my teams. I think those are all the base rosters. I'll have to see, because I can't remember exactly... Uh, I can't remember every little detail about how I customize these teams. But they're all right there. I made them on the old game, and they're back. So I like to do some further customization to the rosters, and uh, get it going. So, yeah, I'd have to do a lot of adjusting, which I'm very cool with. want to make it a balanced league and everything, but I have to figure out how many teams, how many games... Do we want some simulating involved? I just got to think of the full setup for this. So I'm going to need some time to think about it and some feedback from all of you. Let me uh, take a look though. Where are my two canes at? 
Now that was my team. Whoops, I already imported. So this is my Toucan's team, and it does have my customization, because Corin Haggerty was not there at the beginning of the series. So these are actually the current teams from the end of the Super Mega Baseball 2 series. Perry Cummings, Kelly Jean Charles. Very cool. Everybody's here. 32 games should be enough. No simming. Shorter season where you play the games. Yeah, I've done the 16 games. That's all I've ever done before. That's going to be a pretty big decision. 16 games offers good pacing, but baseball tends to work better with more games. How much do this, does this game cost? I believe it's... Let me check to make sure. Looks like 45. 45. I don't care about the length, but definitely no sim. Okay. I'm also thinking, like, do I make it kind of a hybrid series where I play a lot of the episodes regularly, but maybe stream and have some sort of, like, super episodes then where I edit that down into another episode? Sometimes I play it on my own live. Sometimes I stream it and cut it up. A hybrid might work if I want to increase the length of the season. Twelve ninety nine on Xbox? Make sure that's not the first Super Mega Baseball. It's Super Mega Baseball 3. What series is Haggerty from? So Corin Haggerty was a very special prospect. Refresh my memory, everybody. Was that... um? Which franchise was it? Because I know where he went, which was the Jaguars. But he wasn't on my team. Was that the Bears? Or was that the... Chargers. I think it was Chargers. Yeah, he was a six foot four super athlete at corner. Think Isaiah Simmons, but corner instead of safety. Maybe a little less freaky in terms of athleticism, but really good. And, uh, you know, I missed on drafting him and took somebody else. <sighs> One of my best misses of all time. All right. One more second. Really excited that feature is already there though. I did not, uh, realize it was going to be ready so quickly. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I didn't. I hit the team import. Oh, it keeps my league there. It doesn't actually have the old franchise, but it recognizes the structure I had because the league, the teams, the conferences, that's what it's talking about. I've just never played with them on this game, so there's no data. But the framework for that league is still all intact. Alright. I think I owe you guys a game. Now, for Ego. How do I... I can never remember how to get to that Ego menu. There it is. Toggle Ego Mode. So, if you go to Toggle Ego Mode, you have separate Ego modifiers. Hitting, uh, fielding, pitching, what's this, base running? I have no idea what this one is. Sorry, Ollie Sparks was your biggest miss? I mean, it was a miss. I don't think it was my biggest miss. Maybe live stream some games and watch CPU, CPU? That's another option too, Randy. I'd have a lot of, uh flexibility i think with the series because i try not to 
put my ideas in a box so much now. I try to be flexible and not just say, okay, no simming here. Let's play everything. Like, I want to be able to be flexible with whatever it is works at that time. Whether it's playing a bunch of games and then simulating some, streaming, cutting it up. Appreciate the super chat. But yeah, I'm playing on 65 everything. I think I'll bump up the ego a bit here. Let's bump up to 70. Let's go to elite. Feeling good today. V-Dub, appreciate it. Good work. Have to get this game next payday and start a Twitch pennant league. Yeah, I want to see the community get into this game, man. I think there's a lot of fun. And, I mean, it's it's a sports game that's adding a new franchise mode. I mean, of course, it's not like the deepest franchise mode on the planet or anything. But the fact that they have made a new franchise mode, I think, is a big deal. And I want to support it. And hopefully they continue to support it and make it better. Is it cross-play? The Pennant Race Online, I believe, is cross-play. I'm pretty sure it is. Because it was in Super Mega Baseball 2. Do I have any desire switching to Twitch? Not right now. I like the flexibility of being here where my subs are at. And I feel if I ever go to Twitch, it's going to be when I want to have... If I was willing to put in a lot of work to build up myself on that platform. Because it, it, you don't just move from one platform to the next and everybody follows you. It's never that easy. You know, there are streamers that I watched that went to different platforms. And it's just like, I don't watch streaming if it's not on Twitch. That's where I get my notifications. That's where I have my list of subscriptions. It's just out of convenience sake. And that's how a lot of people operate. But I prefer to be on YouTube right now. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it today, everybody. That is beautiful center field. I plan on going right back there again. A uh, multi-streaming is possible, Big Smoke, but a lot of contracts prohibit you from multi-streaming. If you're like a Twitch partner, I'm pretty sure you can't simultaneously stream somewhere else. Gave you a break on that one. Oh, had to climb the ladder. Was that 489? That's my longest home run so far. I thought 477 with Hammer Long Ballo was a moonshot. Damien Rush. Now, another feature here, and this has been in Super Mega Baseball from the beginning, but is the Mojo system. So, it's kind of like a hot and cold system, which you need in the baseball game, I think, because players get really streaky. So, if you're struggling, Mojo drops. If you're doing well, Mojo goes up and your ratings along with it. So, in that lower right-hand corner, the blue uh, bar shows you where those ratings are based on attributes. But, obviously, the bar is surpassing because Rush is on fire. Now, fitness also affects that. Say your player gets hurt, their fitness will drop. Sometimes they can play through those injuries, but just not be their same self. Sometimes they're like 75%. Other times, fitness drops to one bar, and they're just a shell of their former selves, and you got to wait for them to get their fitness back up. Love the mojo system, yes. How do I import teams? So I did so by going into the customize feature at the main menu, going to custom teams, and it was like hit X to, to import. It was a tab. Pretty easy. All right, Johnny Bags. Like the stance. Ooh, that's going to be tough. It's down the line. First to third. Runners at the corners. 
Uh, it doesn't really impact uh, MLB The Show. Like, already, I kind of wanted to wait on that. And I think maybe over the summer, things will change. We'll see. I may, may even just uh, take a break from the show for a while. Ooh, that was too late. That was 102, though, okay? Like, I'm going to miss some 102 fastballs. That's going to happen. Mixed deal. I had no idea her velocity was that high. And it can go higher. What's the max velocity you can have on your fastball, then? If you're, like, in the zone. Your mojo's up. Bang! Over to short. Out number three. Now, to uh, go along with the mojo system, you'll notice in the box score, it's uh, pressure. And that's just simply how much pressure is there in the current situation. If it's, you know, bottom of the ninth, down one... Man on third, there's going to be a lot of pressure. And if you have bad mojo, basically it amplifies the mojo. So bad mojo gets really bad under heavy pressure. But if you're in the zone, pressure is going to make you even better. I've noticed I've had to be a lot more careful with my pitching in this game. If I don't mix it up and start throwing a bit more outside the zone, like, I just start getting line drives everywhere. That's through the middle. Yeah, there are a lot of good names in this, too. A lot of them are from the very first game. They've added more players and more names over the years, and it's a fun game. Few games try to be comedic. This is one of the games that does. And I think does it pretty well. There's a strikeout. Another thing I love about Super Mega Baseball is just how fast everything goes here. You know. Look how fast I'm going from pitch to pitch. Now, obviously, players in this game, like the CPU especially, they're more likely to throw strikes, more likely to swing at strikes. So you don't always see the count worked unless... Um, you know, it will happen on occasion, but if you don't mix up your pitching and throw outside the zone, you're going to have a lot of, like, one pitch at bats. All right, I got to catch up to this heat. I have not played mutant football, no. I saw it when it came out, but I have not played myself. Oh my, 101. I got to load up quicker. I got to get ahead of these pitches. Two strikes. Thank you. Also, the controls are very tight and responsive. And that's been uh, a main thing in this game from the very beginning. So here we have two uh, traits currently being played. Rhiannon Cannon, one of the best names for a pitcher in this game, has... Base on ball prone. So she loses 25 accuracy when pitching with a three ball count. So if you can get there, you know that you have a good chance of drawing a walk. And then I have Demetrius Mata, outside pitch. Power and contact boost when targeting the outside half of the strike zone. That's been my favorite trait to this point because you can just sit out here. And if the pitch goes out there, just go for it. If not, wait unless there's two strikes. I'm not going after any of these, but now it's two strikes. I have to. Whoa. Two and two. Man. Tough to catch up to. That's a line out. And double play. This game does what very few games have ever been able to do in the sports genre, and that is seamlessly blend arcade and simulation elements. It doesn't always work, and it's rarely ever even attempted, honestly. 
But I mean, this game, like, you will have games with a ton of home runs and whatnot. But, as far as, like, fielding and throwing and, you know, stretching a single into a double, like, all these little elements are really well uh, implemented. All right, I can't find the zone here, apparently. Yeah, running bases with multiple runners just takes some getting used to with the controls. Like, I've been playing baseball games for like 15 years. Maybe more. I'm 27. 15 takes me to 12. I was playing baseball before that. My first... Ooh, a wild pitch. I forgot wild pitches were in this game. That's like a new feature, I'm pretty sure. That's the first one I've seen. No, I really don't want to go in the zone... Being a little too patient here, Bridget Barnswabble. Strike three. Strike three! There we go. First baseball game I can remember playing is like MLB 2000 or 2001 on PlayStation. Now batting the second baseman, Lloyd Cook. Lloyd Cook. I can smash home runs with him. Ooh, not like that, though. Wrong bleachers. Only baseball game I've played is Wii Sports. You know, I've been waiting for Nintendo to drop a Wii Sports Switch. Man, it'd be fun. Especially because you don't have to worry about, like, the sensors that were in, like, the Wii and having the camera set up. Like, everything's better now with the Wii, uh... The Joy-Cons. Like, Ring Fit Adventure is an exercise game, and it's just, you know, it's all about the positioning of the Joy-Cons, the rotation, what way they're facing. It tracks workouts in there and body movement incredibly well. And I think that, oh my goodness, that might be my longest home run. Into the tree, let's go! Over the bridge! Never seeing that ball again! How far? Give me 500 plus. Come on. 498! Come on, man! Oh! So close. Oh my! Only 83 power, though. That one's like 398. Maybe 420. Four fifty three. Johnny Bags. I don't know what it is, but I see the ball and time everything up so much better hitting as a lefty in every baseball game, whether it's this or the show. And I'm right handed. I don't do anything lefty. But I like hitting as a lefty in baseball games. That might not fall in, I don't think so. So, three solo shots. Earlier, I was talking about the pace of play and the length of game. Like I said in my video, you know, about a half hour, I'd say, is average. In a pitcher's duel that goes, you know, 2-1 with only a few combined hits, closer to 20 minutes. And then you got your marathon games. 45 combined hits, 13-12 score. Those ones will take, you know, a bit longer. Nothing close to like an hour though, unless you're going to extras. Nice play. Now, the first baseman, 
I'm not using the sirloins for an actual series. I've just been using them as my uh, experiment team here. A lot of power here for Carpenter. I better be careful. Two strikes, two outs. Nice. I'm not usually good at getting strikeouts in this game. Today it's working. Now, just a couple more notes. If you're not familiar with the game, the reticle does have a bit of a drift towards the right direction, but it's up to you to really square it up. So no matter what happens on this pitch, I'll go down looking to prove a point and to just show you something. But here's what the reticle does on its own. It's up to you to do the rest. Super down the line. Oh, man, I thought we had it. Man. So close. Kane, what is the best weather? That's one of the best questions I've ever been asked. My opinion is low 70s with a cool breeze. For me, low 80s cool breeze. Like 80 degrees. Blue skies. Two mile per hour wind is perfect. That was a horrible at bat. I do like it hot, yeah. Although humidity plays a huge role. Like, living in Minnesota, I'm not saying against, you know, Florida humid or anything, but it's humid. There's a ton of water. It's almost always humid. And uh, living in Texas now, it's a lot drier where I am, especially in comparison to uh, Minnesota. Like, I'd rather deal with, you know, 90 in low humidity like I often do here than, uh, whoops, I misjudged that one. Than like 75 in super humid. Now that is the first Rip Dinger. Yeah, sometimes the fielding takes some getting used to, cause it doesn't hold your hand. It takes you in the right direction, a lot like the the reticle for hitting does. It's up to you to do the rest, and you've got to be able to judge kind of the the angle off the bat, and also. Just reading the shadow and how fast it's moving. 25 is perfect. I don't speak Fahrenheit. Oh, uh, what's 25 in Celsius? I feel 25 is cool. 25 sounds like 60 degrees. 25 Celsius to Fahrenheit. 77. Oh, see the Celsius scale always gets me messed up. All I know is uh, 100 is boiling water. So yes, 25 Celsius, I'm on board with that. No idea how many that is in Kelvin. Or any other scale. Ooh, out of reach. Dion Price over Jacory Day. Very similar. I'd have to go Price, too. Although Day has been more successful. Just from a raw talent standpoint. Slightly to Price. Multiply by 1.8... Then add 32. Well, I can't do that in my head. The second part. That's problem. And through the middle. Bases are going to be loaded if they don't test it. Throwing home. 
Maybe I'm getting lazy here with my pitching. Sometimes I get in the zone and don't realize that I'm just not changing it up. Because obviously the CPU is anticipating. You'll notice here on the screen after certain pitches. Either they were anticipating something or they were fooled because you were able to mix it up. Alright, this is a big pitch. Oh, by the way, I know you can't really see all the uh, ratings here because I'm in the way, but it shows the ratings on screen at all times so you always know what's, uh, what's going on there. Kelvin is just 273 to Celsius. What is Kelvin used for? All right, guys, we're going with the curveball on the outside corner. Uh-oh. Found the hole again. And testing home safe. It's tied at three. All right. How do you have a problem with that? Mata's fielding is low, and that was not that bad of a pitch. I just think that his low fielding is going to make that a possibility. And that hurt, because we only have one out. This is a rough inning. I could really use a strikeout. I got them earlier. Popped up. Kelvin is like scientific melting points for metals and stuff as far as I know. Perhaps somebody knows more than I do, but it feels like the Scoville scale for measuring heat. You know, you always see it. This ghost pepper is a million on the Scoville scale. I feel like that scale is nothing more than marketing. How can something actually be like 10,000 times hotter than a jalapeno? That sounds doctored big time. I don't know anything about it, but it doesn't pass the smell test. Strike three, how about that? Oh, he's gonna need a new bat after that one. I feel like the Scoville scale was invented to sell peppers. Maybe it wasn't. Well, that was a horrible at-bat. Alright, we gotta break this tie now. We're top five. Ooh, that's a strike. Are we sure about that one? I want instant replay on that. Oh! Why'd I chase that? Oh, man. I can't handle this heat. So, Cannon's uh, stamina, I think, is affecting her velocity a little bit. It's a bit down, but not enough. <clears throat> My ego level? I'm playing on 70 right now. When I'm uh, in the zone on this game, I typically play at 85 or 90. But it's been a while. Oh, can you tell? This is the first pitcher I've faced, really, that's had that kind of velocity. Plays with your head a little bit. Oh, that was another one he couldn't handle. Uh-oh! Deep shot, center field! Goodbye! Moose take the lead. Another homer. My thoughts on Jalen Hurts? I thought that he was going to be a very intriguing quarterback to bring in, to develop as a QB too, and to be a package player until uh, he were to get a starting opportunity. 
he went a bit earlier than I thought. And maybe he never ends up being starting caliber. But I have no doubt he ends up being um, a valuable player as teams get more creative and they realize, you know, role-based players can be used if you know what you're doing. I mean, if Taysom Hill were in the NFL 10 years ago, he probably would have had a very short career. And that's just the matter of 10 years. Like, 10 years ago, teams just started to get creative with, like, the Wildcat. And they weren't even threatening the pass with it. They were very uncreative. But I feel like now we've kind of uh, seen things change a lot. Now what I want to see is somebody go sign Joe Webb, who has proven to be a, a long-term valuable backup quarterback in the league, and start running some real packages with him. And not the blazer that Bill Musgrave tried out. The blazer package was garbage. It was just a wildcat. Oh, man. Rip to center, and that's past rush to the wall. Got a good throw into the infield, though. Holding the runners in scoring position. I might have to pull my pitcher. Yeah, Kays is up to 90. He's tense. I kept him in way too long. Relief pitchers. I don't have a lot of great ones. I'm going to go with Miguel Duke here. Why would you do that? That makes no sense. Because I'm going to do nothing but throw sliders and curveballs and try to get a strikeout. Uh-oh. Not far enough. And Mata's fielding is getting exposed here. I've never had to worry about fielding like that at catcher before. The jet sweep was a trick play a decade ago. Yeah, now it's just a good idea. That you can do so much off of. Alright, so far so good. Won't take the bat off the shoulders. This is just an experiment. I'm not worried about the quality of this team or weaknesses or anything. Uh-oh. No! Six to three. Can I get a ground ball at somebody, please? Not going to use this fastball too much. But it's harder to line up the reticle when you're doing... Uh, like off-speed pitches and whatnot. There we go. Way inside. That's inside. Full count. I say we go slider. Right here. Nice. Miguel Duke. I'm not sure how good the backup catcher is on this team. Mata. I don't have a backup catcher. Hmm. Throwing a couple fastballs every now and then. Oh, come on. I got a pitch I can... Waste here. I don't mind walking them. Although, who do I have now? Nacho Crisp. Maybe I shouldn't have walked to face him. Let's take out Duke. Everybody's tense. Their ratings are just so low. I have to go Shady here. My only option. What do I do the rest of the game, though? I might have to score 20 to win this. It's a little intense right now. Popped up behind third base. Come on, got to get there. Yes. Out number three. All right, I got to score some runs. Cannon's still in the game. Stamina's only at half. Now batting, the 
All right, Johnny. Left center. Hit pretty well, but too much hang time. I don't like that strike. I'm not hitting that one. I need to get more comfortable with that one, though. And then I go after an even worse pitch. All right, got to get it going somehow. So for instead of having a ball trail in this game, what happens is your fielders will automatically move in the right direction, but at a slower speed, and then your job is to take over and do the rest by reading the shadow and how fast it's moving. You'll get the hang of it. It's been that way from the very beginning. Will you swing the bat? Ooh, that's a filthy strikeout. Power versus lefties. Now rip dingers. This could be an issue. Plus 10 power when batting versus a left-handed pitcher. And he's RBI man. So I can't throw a wild pitch. Because if a runner gets into scoring position, his power and contact go up. Should pitch around him. Stamina is super low, too. Ball four. Take your base. Now the left. Still weird to me that Eli isn't my quarterback anymore. Nope, it's Daniel Jones. Probably last batter here for Shady. And that is not going to be a good outcome for us. Deep right center field, and that should plate two more. Possibly three. Or how many were even on base? Was it 6-3? Can't remember. Yeah, it was starting out pretty good. Oh, come on. Ice Vayner. What are these ratings, man? Rowan Novak. Need a miracle. Ooh. Yeah, that was... I think that might be based on, like, their accuracy slider. Like, that one moved way differently. That's going to be a triple. You know what we do in this situation, everybody? We just simulate it to the end, and we're going to go... Get a new, uh, some upgraded bullpen for this. <laughs> Playing on 70 Ego. Which is pretty high. I'm not sure if Ego's, like, been rebalanced from, uh, like, past games or anything. But I typically play on a higher Ego. Not to brag. Let's see, I need some pitchers. Relief pitchers that maybe have... Oh, I guess stamina is kind of uh, not really a rating. Chiron Throne. Relief pitcher. How about Bert Bergerer? Or Bert Bergerer, I'm not sure. Let's drop uh, to Rock Smith here. A D plus. That's a low grade. What else do we got here? Beefcake McStevens. Why is he available? He must have been cut. We can check out the... The, the news... I 
won't they cycle right now? Let me simulate the CPU games. Why would he be available? Not sure why I can't scroll this right now. Anyway. Beefcake McStevens plays shortstop. Perry Quaker. Filet Jones. Rosie Hardman. Sort by, uh, ooh, traits. Here's everybody that has traits. If you're looking for a specific role. Plus 25 contact with two strikes. That's nice. No fielding penalty when playing at a secondary position. Wow. The utility trait is really cool. They can play anything. I like that. That's the kind of player you want on your bench. Utility. What other traits do we got here? Tough out. The contact. RBI man. We have outside pitch. We have walk prone. Composed. What's composed? Plus 25 accuracy with a three ball count. Ooh, I like that. Let's sign Beefcake McStevens. He plays short as well. Yeah, I'm just messing around with this one anyway. So here are all our new player development opportunities. Um, so here's like a low rated player with a chance to get better than Whopper Batsman. We can increase his speed and his fielding. It probably won't be very much, but possibly it could be solid with a 10% chance at a trait. Plus five. Got it that time. Wait, no, I didn't. The first one I made, yeah. Let's, uh, I want to try getting some more traits. That's a 5% chance, so it's not very likely to happen. That utility trade is going to be one that I covet, for sure. That's pretty sweet. What are you guys thinking for my league in terms of the DH? It can be on or off. Or it can be on in one conference, off in another. Traditionally, Super Mega Baseball has no DH. So, the rookie... The system is pretty simple for rookies in this game. Basically, after a season is over, they all join the free agent pool. You can sort by the youngest players and see all the 18 and 19 year olds. And then you just sign them. There isn't like a draft and no scouting. Universal DH. Lloyd Cook. Why didn't I swing at the first one? More good velocity here from Vern Turnburner. Ooh, that might fall in center. It sure does. A base hit. Have DH in both leagues and then make it so all the DHs are defensive tackles from your series. There's an idea. Ooh. I'm having some issues against these high velocity pitchers. That's a contact swing. 
I wasn't even trying to go yard. Well, that's what happens. Home run, Damian Rush. Big Sky Ballpark. Man, wouldn't this one fit Kalispell pretty well? Yeah, Kalispell is going to be in this game because I already made them in Super Mega Baseball 2. This is going to be their new ballpark. they got to have the mountains in the background. What's the park next uh, that's near Kalispell? Isn't it uh, Glacier National Park? Oh, my! Drilled him! And still out. Now, Vern Turnburner. Do you see what happened? Extreme pain. Um, I think I'm in the way of you seeing that. It popped up extreme pain. He has one fitness now. His ratings are done. He's going to have to come out of the game. But they haven't pulled him. He's still pitching. Wow. Wow. I wonder if in the second inning they'll make a change. No, I don't think you can turn off what you would call the PCI in this game. It's just the way the hitting is. But I don't like PCI hitting in the show. I'm a timing hitter. I'm just not good enough to do reticle stuff. But in this game, I can pick it up easier. Man, Mata, you gotta be able to field. If you haven't already done so, please leave a like on the stream as this is going deep to center. See ya, tie game. Gotta be careful. Yep, Falcons off season's gonna be tomorrow night. I love to be able to finish it too. We'll have to see, cause that game, like everything, takes a lot of time. And then once you get done with the pre uh, off season, you have the preseason, which also takes a lot of time. I've gotta get better at uh, not getting the first pitch of an at-bat hammered. Uh-oh, in the center, hit well! The deepest part of the park that'll contain it. And that might bring home another run. Nope, they hold at third. This is just the first inning. Maybe I'm not a 70 uh, ego pitcher. They really make you pay when you miss your spot, though. Decent isn't really that decent. Base hit. Another run for the Moonstars. I have played NBA Playgrounds. I have not played the second one, though. The first one was kind of fun. Do they make any big changes in the second one? Because I saw the reviews weren't that great when it came out. Come on. Really got to have good aim on these higher egos. Foul. There we go. That's a big pitch. Outside corner strike three. RBI dud. Okay. So Nori Miyoshi has a negative trait that makes it so her power and contact are actually worse with runners in scoring position. That's tough. Now, 
I just thought of this, but I believe that once a player has a trait, they have it permanently. I don't know that traits disappear, and that includes negatives. So that is like a big risk to upgrading at times, because like anything bad is not getting fixed, unless that's not the case. I don't know why I pitched so carefully there. I should have made her hit. That's okay. We got Taylor worry more. Give me a ground ball. Nothing in the gap. Nothing in the gap. That's a lot of pitches for one inning here. DH in one league and no DH in the other? I'm thinking about it, Randy. I don't know. Uh-oh! Grand Slam. 7-2. to two. Whoa! I, uh... I'm not pitching well. Maybe I'm not uh, good enough to pitch on 70 Ego. Let me drop it. Let's sim it. Let's try it again. I'll go back to 65 Ego. I was enjoying that. I don't think a pitcher took me yard. I don't think Worry More is a pitcher. Let me see. Oh boy. Yeah, he's a second baseman with 61 power. And RBI man. I guess his mojo was down and I wasn't too worried about it. How much money do you start out with? So it all depends on your budget. So it just ends up being, you know, the budget is 140 million. And then you can spend up to that. Anything you don't spend becomes your surplus. And then your surplus divided by 16 or however many games are in your season. So if we were playing 162 games, I'd be getting far less every week that's to scale the systems with your season length you'll want it to be variable if you're playing 16 games or 162 they can't be equal all right moon stars again yeah i could have just turned pitching ego down i'll try 65 i have to figure out like what i want to play on in this game I am not sure yet, but my pitching has just been really uh, difficult. Um, not thinking about Patreon right now. Uh, the YouTube join feature, I think, is uh, a great addition to the platform. That's uh, one way to support the channel if you choose does get you access to some episodes of content that I make early does get you access to the member stream I do every month those member streams are a lot of fun what was that what's wrong with you baseball is a hard game to stream it takes focus that isn't at least for me, it takes focus that isn't great for, like, managing chat and constantly, like, looking away from the screen, coming back to it. Oh, boy. What's for dinner tonight? I have no idea. But I'm starting to build an appetite. Uh, no community sharing as far as I know. I don't believe so. Out to center, rush back, going up for it, and it's gone. 
4-15. This is a really good team we're facing, too. My pitcher is just okay. Wait. Bert Bergerer. He's a relief pitcher. Oh. That's why they never pulled the pitcher after he got hurt. Top of the screen. Three batter minimum. Even injured. Alright, let me... I need to at least play a game where I have a starting pitcher. I'm thinking five guys. Ooh, five guys. Haven't had that in a while. Since the NFL season. Spaghetti or pizza? <laughs> right now, pizza sounds better. All right, let's play another game. We're going back to Manny K's here. Is there like something wrong with the rotation? And that's causing a problem or something? Shrimp scampi. I don't really like seafood. What exactly is shrimp scampi? I only have two starting pitchers on this team. That doesn't seem good. What do other teams have? Four. Four. Whoops. Shrimp, butter, garlic. Well, anything that's covered in butter and garlic is going to taste really good. Hurley Bender, 23 million. I don't know if I can handle that. I have 9.5 in space. Bianca Parker. Now yeah, let's cut Dusty Winder here. Bianca Parker. Just for another starter. I might, I might not even pitch with her. I just felt like that was a bad setup. Wow, rattled. So here's a player whose uh, mojo is so rattled that her ratings are really, really low right now. Do I have another third baseman, though? I don't have a utility player. What about McStevens? He can play third base. That's his primary. Okay. So position swap. And then I need someone to play short. Can batsman? No. Can Lloyd Cook? No. And these are the situations you'll want to make roster decisions around. Signing somebody. Yeah, let's make one. Let's go sign someone to play a game at short. So let's go pitchers, position players... I want all the shortstops right here. Snag Roper. Really good defense and good bat. 7.8 million. But in this case, say you were just doing a, like a, a regular franchise and you're like, okay, just one game here. I need someone to start. You go here, Wiggles Freeman. Wiggles Freeman. Who should I sign here for one game at short, everybody? Ham Slamis. I guess I cut him. I could bring him back. Ralph Blue. Snag Roper. Who do you want to see? Any tips for batting? Um, Start on a lower ego. And get used to your power timing. You want to load up, you know, right before the pitcher is, you know, 
throwing the ball so you have enough time to react to it. And it's just kind of a matter of repetition to get the timing down. Power over contact. I, I like to do power swings with power hitters. And contact swings with contact hitters. Or contact if it's like two strikes and I don't feel confident against that particular pitcher. Maybe their velocity is just too much and I need to make a contact swing regardless. Alright, Snag Roper has been signed. I didn't even mess with my batting orders or anything. I'm not going to do anything with this team but experiment, so I'm not worried about a backup catcher or anything. Cajun chicken Alfredo pasta. I'm not really a big Alfredo fan, but... Cajun chicken might be enough to get me interested. All right, everybody. Let's see if I can put together a good nine inning game for you. At least one in this stream. Against the wild pigs. Popped him up. Good start. So, a uh, long ballo, he begins franchise at 39 years old, and after my first year, he opted for free agency. Then I signed him, and after that, I think he retired. Uh oh, McStevens got it. So, when you do a franchise, don't expect long ballo for too long. High pitch. Okay. I've seen the outside pitch traits before, but this is a player who really does well high in the zone, and then I, I threw it high in the zone, and he got on base. What a shocking development. Um, I think this game comes out every other year. I think that's kind of been the formula lately. Alright, Lloyd Cook. 3-1. You'll want to also manipulate your power load timing based on the velocity of the opposing pitcher. So the faster, the earlier you want to load up because you want to be able to have a high power when that ball is reaching the plate. But on a slower pitcher, slightly later for the same result. And this guy can't find the zone. How is his ERA 159? Probably because he's so unpredictable. You're just getting lucky hitting the corners over and over again. Come on! <laughs> Are you serious? I can't believe I struck out there. Oh, I'm just so rattled now. Popped up foul territory. What an inning. So... When you sign a player that has a lower uh, salary, you're not necessarily given more money right there. But say I, uh, you know, I drop my salary ten million dollars by making a swap. Now that ten million is added to my surplus, 
and it's still on a game by game basis. Oh, let's go. Here we go. So that surplus is divided by your games every week. So if you have 10 million divided by however many games you got, that's what you're going to get it each week. Now say you make a move and now you have 15 million in surplus. Now it's going to give you that much. It will go up, but it's still based on that per game per week amount. So if you have 10 million in space, you bump it to 15, and you have one game left in your season, you're not getting $5 million. You're going to get however much 15 million divided by your number of games is. And that's going to be what you get for that week. So if you want to get more money, you have to make those moves sooner than later. I faced all these speedy pitchers. And now I got this slow guy here, Jamie Yuppers. And I'm a little thrown off my game. Base hit, though, left field. Just takes a couple ABs. You get money every week. Yeah, after every game, it gives you more money. All right, low pitch and whiffer. So don't get the two strikes here with Johnny Bags. And let's target low pitches. And hit him. Ah. Oh, misplay to that short. An error for Michaels. Got lucky. And here's Snag Roper, the newest member of the Sirloins. Uh oh. In the left. Base hit. I'm excited to see the Cowboys offense this year. I'm hoping that uh, C.D. Lamb has a very quick start to his uh, career. That one through three is going to be nasty. Ah, stay. Stay, stay, stay. So their catcher has a low fielding, I noticed. Uh-oh. Missed play now at third. This team doesn't have any defense. Not very good. Into left center field. Let's go. Let's put some runs on the board here today, everybody. It is 3-0. At least enough games to have a series against in-conference opponents. Oh, we're still talking about that. I guess I haven't really uh, mentioned it. But, yeah, I still want suggestions and feedback. Man, Mata, I had no idea. One thing, too, in this game, I remember from uh, the second game, is catchers naturally have their fitness drop more than other players because catching is a it's a demanding position. So you want to have a backup catcher, and I messed up by not addressing that. So Mata is just having uh, his fitness drained each game. So here I think I want to bunt. Get the squeeze going. No, I won't have to do a custom like draft that I put together because the game has an off season in it. Busted lumber, and another run scores five nothing. It is not an annual release game. No. Outside pitch. I think what's really happening here is I just can't adjust to this slow timing with my power swings. Contact swinging is easier, but to change like that for uh, velocity and power is just too much for me right now, I guess. Now, Mata's going to drop a few. Luckily, I'm up 5-0. You know what I haven't done? I haven't done a power pitch. You can actually do what's called power pitches, which are like more effective, higher risk, higher reward pitches. You hit R2 as you're going to pitch. Or what is it in this game? 
I have never done a power pitch in this specific game. It's square. Yeah. Got wild aim on that one. You have to time your release of it, too? So you can do power pitches, which is probably why my uh, pitching was so bad on 70. I think when you go to those higher egos, you need to start utilizing power pitches like that. Eli, appreciate it. Leon Daniels, 30 for 30. Oh, man, you could do a Leon doc for sure. He's had quite the sports journey. Yeah, these power pitches are what I was missing. But it is a... It's an awkward mechanic to get used to at first because it's a timing mechanic with a button and it's an aiming mechanic with a stick. Now the short spot, Luke Michaels. It's something you're probably going to want to do when you have like two strikes and there's runners on base and you've got to make a play. What's my favorite stadium? I really like the one I had for the two canes in my series. The one where it's like that harbor in the background. I believe that was the one. I haven't seen all the stadiums in game. I'm not familiar with the new ones. There's a double over the head of DeMarco. You gonna do any MLB? Uh, maybe over the summer. Maybe when the season comes back. When we have real baseball. But right now, I have enough to keep me occupied. Base hit right field. Yep, Super Mega only has a baseball game. I love a Super Mega football. Especially with how they can blend, you know, sim and arcade together. Which I think, you know, a more arcadey experience is easier when you're like a smaller studio and whatnot. But man, I feel that their formula given the time and resources can make a really fun game maybe not like a perfect uh, like football simulation but something that you know does what this is for the game of baseball super mega hockey i think that would actually be really fun super mega basketball oh my we are destroying this team three run shot Honestly, I would love to see more games like this. You know, NBA Playgrounds, I would say, is in the same you know realm as this game. But I think that Super Mega Baseball is better, and it's certainly trying to be more. That's gone as well. Suddenly, now, I'm unstoppable. Like, we haven't had an NFL Blitz game or any kind of NFL game that would... You know, be easy pick up and play game like this. I mean, this game, I think that Super Mega Baseball is easy to pick up and play. Definitely. But, it gets deeper. And you can't master it in a day. And you're not going to be playing on high egos after a day, most likely. The last football game to go down this path was NFL Blitz in 2012. Which was just basically another way for EA to sell Ultimate Team. There wasn't much else to it. Now I understand that the next uh, 2K football game... Not going to be a Madden competitor. I don't know what it's going to be, but I... I mean, what can it be? There are only a few options. I think it's going to be something along the lines of NFL Street, NFL Blitz. Something... With the way 2K handles basketball, I assume it's going to be a very cooperative multiplayer experience. I expect some sort of 7-on-7 seven -seven style street game of football. That's my current expectation. Do I want that? Yeah. Do I want something else more? Yeah.
But uh, I do think that the branding really matters. And that's uh, another run. Like, I mentioned earlier in the stream, the Golf Club 2K21 is getting some hype. I've seen streamers talking about it. I see, you know, a lot of people talking about how they're excited for this new game. The Golf Club existed. It has for like five years. It's been a good game for five years. But the PGA branding is what finally got people to notice it existed. Like, branding matters. And with that being said, part of me wonders, like, is whatever 2K is working on, could it be the start of them creating a Madden competitor again one day? As people, you know, associate 2K with football once again. I know a lot of us do, but NFL 2K5 is 15 years old. People that grew up and are like 20 or younger, they didn't play 2K5. They likely never will. As soon as they see what the, you know, graphic quality is on the PS2 and whatnot and hook it up to their big 4K TV and see how poorly it translates over, they'll never play the game. But maybe it's the start of getting back to where things used to be. Do I think a football game will ever become better than Madden? I'd have to think so. I think Madden's greatest weakness is that it is built upon so many years of games and old code and unfinished features and things that need to be updated but obviously aren't every year and it's a yearly release game so only so much gets adjusted within that year. Now, I don't know when or if we're ever going to see a simulation style game with the budget and the resources that's going to make the football game that we all want to play. Or if Madden ever takes that step, but I don't think any of us, you know, ever assume that the next Madden is going to be this revolutionary leap forward. We've been through how many console generations now with uh, without any competition. And I think there are areas of Madden that have gotten a lot better, but the guts of the game, like the true skeleton of Madden, still needs a lot of work. There are a lot of things I enjoy about Madden that are indefinitely indefinitely is that the word I want to use that are how about just much better than like what NCAA does Madden has a much better uh, play calling system than NCAA now that Madden has introduced um, like scheme specific play calling for uh, teams and you notice like when you play the Rams you get all these jet sweeps all these play actions we play the Ravens you get their style of offense that's one area Madden's gotten better than NCAA. But that's not the area that we're all pushing for and wanting heavily. I like what Madden has done with the archetype system. Um, that's wild. I like what Madden has done with the, uh, the coverage techniques. So now not every flat zone is played the same that was a big change like that was there are two big things madden has done this gen and that is wide receiver db animations overdue but they're here i like them although i don't always like the locked in like two-man animations it feels forced at times but that's one area madden's gotten better and then the coverage techniques but still while the techniques are there Madden's guts, the core of the game, still does not do a good enough job with uh, animations outside of the catch point. A lot of the coverage animations are not very good. The coverage instincts aren't good enough. 
And that holds that area back. And there are still plenty of AI issues. A lot of the AI um, has regressed. Like, quarterback scrambling AI. I've watched some older games of mine. And I saw Johnny Manziel take off in Madden 25 on... Uh, yeah, it was this console. Not Madden 25 either. It was Madden 15. I fired up uh, one of those and I saw Manziel taking off with very quick agility and whatnot. Basically a skate artist. It's just that at this point, too many things have to be built from scratch again, and they're not going to be. You can remodel a house as many times as you want. It'll never be brand new again. UK did a lot of really good things. They had uh, just the player movements and interaction animations, man. That's what it boils down to. That's where most of the game is decided, quality-wise. And that's why 2K is still so sought after. Double play. Yeah, if 2K8 had a dynasty mode, man, what were they thinking with that game? I mean, not having the NFL license already puts you at a major disadvantage, but they made a game. But who was that game for? Because it just had a bare bones season mode. I wonder if the plan was to just to get hype behind all the legends and hopefully sell some copies and then make a greater game if it sold well put more time into franchise I'm not sure a deeper franchise mode would have uh, affected the sales of that game enough I think the branding is just such a big deal for football they didn't want legends to age not a great reason But yeah, uh, as things are right now, like I have a good time with Madden 20, but obviously I think that I have an easier time than others overlooking certain flaws, and part of it is I've been, I'm just so used to them, I guess. And I still have fun, like we still have some really cool experiences, it's just we wish we could unlock that full potential. That guy's got an arm. I'm going back. Right field, let's score again. Yeah, the the quarterback accuracy stuff, I will say I think is getting better. Like, if you want to see some of the progress made, like, compare it to NCAA. Now, NCAA, one area Madden is much better than NCAA is quarterback accuracy and ball velocity. In NCAA... Everybody in that game throws a 135 mile per hour fastball. The ball can get outside so quickly. NCAA would be a very different game. I think the gameplay would actually be a lot better if you could tone down ball speed. Allow the DBs to close with a bit more time to react. And not make all these ridiculous laser precision throws. In Madden, the ball travels a lot slower, it has better trajectories, and accuracy is more varied, even though it still needs to be even more varied than it is. I got rid of Rosen for Leighton because Leighton had superstar accuracy, and his mobility would add more to the offense. I knew it would take some time for him to reach Rosen's level as a passer, but I thought that once he made it, he'd have much more potential. And I think we're finally getting there, but it took a year of struggles to reach. Oh, 
Oh, the accuracy still has problems. Yeah, the underneath passing game in Madden, there's something up with it because timing routes underneath, and not even just timing routes, like just slants. Throw it when they're open. And you'll miss by like five yards on a throw that's five yards. That doesn't make any sense. To me, it's the game forcing an inaccurate pass. And yeah, obviously the game has to have randomness and that's always a good thing in sports games for simulation. You know, if you have a 71 accuracy, you should have, you know, a high chance of that ball not being exactly where it needs to be. But their idea of an inaccurate pass is in another time zone. When an inaccurate pass should be maybe at the receiver's feet or slightly behind him, slightly ahead. You know, that's true accuracy on display, not just flat out missing. Flat out missing is really bad. But accuracy goes beyond catchable versus uncatchable. Uh-oh. Hey, that works too. <laughs> I don't know either. I have noticed though, playing at like 49 QB accuracy and 48, I start to see a few more of those passes that are actually like behind the receiver, they're catchable, they're inaccurate, but they're still within reach. I just want that on a regular basis. Uh oh. You know, I don't know what they're going to do with abilities in the next game. But I disagree with a lot of the abilities. And I still feel that ratings offer a great experience for simulation. You know, I had like a 20 sack season with Von Miller with no abilities. If I had abilities, you can absolutely count on there being more than we had. But there are some that I, I just don't think should exist. I don't think Escape Artist should exist. That can be based on ratings. Do not unlock basic ability, or don't hold back basic abilities behind abilities. Does that make sense? Basic functions should not be special. We already have speed, acceleration, agility, elusiveness, juke, Spin, that's enough. You do not need Escape Artist. The game just needs to be balanced properly. In that case, Escape Artist was basically a band-aid to say, okay, by default it's not good. So here is a powerful ability that really should be available to anybody with the athleticism and speed. But instead, it's going to be exclusive to Lamar Jackson, essentially. Enforcer, I don't like. Hit sticks already were made more powerful in Madden. Hit sticks have a very high tendency to jar the football out. By any player that has a high hit power, that is. You add Enforcer, it makes the game an arcade fest. Too many of these things were thought of with like online play in mind. If Enforcer were balanced, which it shouldn't exist anyway, but what do the top fumble forcers force in a season? Four to six on the high end for fumbles a year? I'm not even talking strip sacks. I'm talking like safeties. Ooh. You know what kind of fumbles I'm talking about, right? If that were realistic and you're playing ultimate team and it were scaled properly, you'd only see a forced fumble like every five games. Maybe more. And so obviously, the game isn't balanced around 120 play-a-game simulation football. It's based around 6-minute quarter, 50-60 plays. And if they want Enforcer to matter, they have to make it so, you know, there's going to be a good chance of a fumble in that game. So when you go to a simulation length game, all of a sudden you're dealing with 2-3 to three a game. Which isn't good. So, 
Will I use abilities? I don't know. Part of why I do in the Bucks series is because no one on the team has Enforcer. It hasn't become a problem. But every time I face an Enforcer, pretty much without fail, they will force a fumble in that game. And there is not a player in the NFL that has or ever will average a forced fumble per game. Yeah, they've kind of uh, come back a little bit. This is an issue. Why are there so many home runs? Ah, oh, there are a lot of good power hitters. Certainly on my team, this is a power hitting team. I think, you know, you're going to see more home runs than you would in, like, simulation baseball. But if you have good pitching and uh, you know what you're doing, you can limit them. But certainly, like, power hitters in this game hit home runs. They go yard. Fair ball. Fair ball. No. What team should I use for my franchise? It depends what you're looking for in an experience. Whether it's rebuilding, developing. Um, what kind of challenges do you want in terms of your division opponents? I like recommending teams, but I need a little data. Or at least some expectation. Because there's a team that fits any scenario. Just a matter of what you want. Realistic and rebuild. So, I'm not sure if you're using, like, custom rosters. You're talking football, I imagine. Um, like, custom rosters that are up to date with the draft. But regardless, I think a good team for that would be, like, the Jets. I think now you have the Bills on the rise in that division. If you have updated rosters, now you got some more firepower on the Dolphins. You got the Patriots post-Brady. But the Jets with Sam Darnold. Got to work on developing him. You got Le'Veon Bell. Do you want to keep him in that contract or try to move him for picks? You got some fun difference makers on defense, but you got to really work on the Jets offense. Do I have a favorite 360 PS3 era NCAA in Madden? I do. Uh, NCAA 14 was the one I spent the most time with, and I did not play the series a lot prior to YouTube, so 14's my favorite. And for Madden, it is definitely Madden 12. That game holds up still. I played it over a year ago on the channel, and even with the sliders I was playing on, like, I could pick up that game and play. Legit. Legit franchise games. I can do it. On the ground, over to Cook, out at second, got him at first, ball game. Should I buy Super Mega Baseball 3? That's for you to decide. I think it's a fun game, but everybody's looking for something different out of games, and uh, I'm here to just showcase the game. Give you my thoughts on it. I do think it's a fun game. I think you could spend a lot of time on it. I love the speed of the game. It's on a bunch of different platforms. It's certainly a game that I recommend if you're interested. Am I ever going to do a 2K realistic mode or no? Another one on 2K? I don't know. I had fun with the surf while I was doing it. But, um, no plans for basketball right now. Now, I just want to show you guys the offseason quick. So, I'm going to go here, simulate to the end of the year. Which, by the way, someone asked about sim speed earlier. This is simming multiple weeks, what it looks like. And that was simming multiple weeks. You cannot sign or release players in uh, the postseason, nor can you develop them. I don't think. I'm not in the postseason. I've never actually made the playoffs here in a sim, so I've never gotten to check that. 
But if I sim us to the off season, plans for Super Mega Baseball, I want to do a series. And hopefully a very fun one on the second channel. So the off season is pretty simple, but it gets the job done. So after the year is over, players have the chance to choose for free agency or retire. So in our case, we had one player retire, it looks like. Oh, that's what's wrong. I couldn't scroll earlier. I was doing L2, R2. I need to use the right stick. Oh, okay. Hey, Gary, appreciate the super chat. Any streams the next two weeks? I work weekends, but I have two weeks and around Memorial Day off. Uh, definitely. I'm playing a lot of NFL head coach. I'm streaming it tomorrow. And other than that, um, mostly head coach is what I'm going to be streaming. And that's what I have been streaming now for a couple months. I could potentially stream this again. But uh, safe to say I'll be streaming again soon. Recommendations for a Madden 20 offline franchise, either bad quarterback or quarterback I can replace and a bad offensive line and decent receivers. Um, I would say the Rams. They got some receiving talent, but the old line regressed. Andrew Whitworth is getting older and you can move on from Jared Goff. A lot of potential with that team. And then you got Jalen Ramsey holding on to a big portion of your salary cap. What time tomorrow? Um, target about six. I'm going to try to stream a bit earlier for those night streams just because the off seasons run long. So I'll try uh, six o'clock central tomorrow night. Member stream? Um, not sure which weekend yet. Possibly next. Actually, I think it will be next because I'll get some feedback for uh, Super Mega Baseball. Oftentimes, those member streams are a chance just for me to get some more feedback. Um, they're smaller. If you want to interact, it's a lot easier to get like questions answered and stuff like that. When are you doing Broncos franchise and Kalispell? Uh, Tomorrow is going to be the new Kalispell episode. And then I would say Broncos the following day or sunday probably saturday gotta do some editing and get that stuff going but yeah i wanted to talk about the off season here a little bit let me get some tunes going while we're at it all right so in this off season like i said players can retire and they can also opt for free agency. And it's usually the older players that this will happen to. So, here are the highlights of player resignations and availability. We have all these really good players here. These A- minus and uh, A+, plus and B+, plus players. Their salary demands have gone up because they've gotten better since their last salary. Or in the case of this game in the beginning... Every player has a base salary, and it's relatively low for um, high-rated players. Like, Hammer Long Ballo was, I think, $13 million. But as soon as you get to free agency, those players in his tier are getting more than double that. So, this is scrolling fast here. I had better control of this the other day. I'm not sure what happened. But here are some of the uh, retirements. 46, 31. You never really know how long players are going to play here. But if we go to sign in release here, we lost one player here. Retired. So I have to for sure replace this player. Now. Every player here has a salary they demand. And that number will go down every round. So let's put these players on my watch list. Here are all the top players that will be on my watch list. $28 million is the highest salary. He's an A-plus player. 
So let's sim around and see what happens. There are 32 rounds. After the first one. Okay, so Mac Gun was signed. But otherwise, Leighton Bonetti lowered his asking salary. Now it's down to $26.2 And that's a big deal. Sometimes, you know, an extra couple million dollars, that's going to get you a lot of development over the course of the year. You saw how much a lot of those packages were. 300k, 500k, 1 million. You know, a million dollars is equivalent to like one to three upgrade packages. So, yeah, that is a big deal. If we sum another round. Benetti's down to 24.9. No one signed him. If I sim another round. I wonder if he was signed. Rhonda Horn was signed. Leighton Benetti down to 23.7. I want to go even lower. Let's see, at the very top now, Bonetti's still there, 21.5 million. I haven't experimented with this enough to know exactly like how often a player will go for the highest amount. But obviously here, the salaries are dropping. It's dropping at a slower rate now. Bonetti's salary went from 20.9 to 20.3. Yes, so, one of the things for the Broncos series is I am trying to start implementing some storylines that make sense and just some situations. And uh, one of the things I'm going to do is uh, I'm not allowing myself to re-sign Phillips or Fant until they hit open free agency. If I choose to bring them back at all. That's just what I think would be realistic. Those players you know, would want a chance to maximize their salaries and get better roles on other teams. So, that's going to be how it is for those two players in particular. I want to see when Benetti actually goes. No transactions. Has he really not been signed yet? Yeah, he's still there. Leighton Benetti. Now the salary's down to 17 million. 17.3. Now, what we could be seeing here is that most teams are at their cap. I don't know. Let's let's just see. I haven't really taken my time through this to see how many negotiations and transactions are made in these later rounds. One was made by another team. I only want to see player transactions right now. I want to see if anybody expensive is getting signed. All right, Leighton Bonetti finally got signed, 16.1. So you couldn't just wait until the very end and get him for like nine, but you could have waited to go from 26 to 16. If you timed it perfectly, and chances are you won't time it perfectly. It's not easy. And now the best available. Twelve point two for Grunt Manley. Now let's see if he gets signed. Blute Michaels, ten point eight million. And the Moose signed Grunt Manley at 11.9. So I do like that the CPU teams, like, they are conscious of salary. And it seems like they... It's not a simple approach. Like, either they want them or they don't. Like, they have target prices. And I...
can't see their their cap space any chance of a Tigers rebuild I don't know what I'm doing right now in terms of MLB but chances are I would not take the Tigers because I just did the twins for three years and I would want a new division to play in now here's another thing that can happen um Mill Conley was just released 8.9 million 23 years old they got rid of him so they could sign another catcher for a lot less money so now let's go into here and let's get him on our watch list and see when another team would sign him what was his name again Mill Conley Mill Conley plays catcher so they downgraded that catcher. Maybe he shows up in the next round? Let's see. I didn't see him there. Oh no, he, he was the player. Wait. It's Marker Bauer. I had the names backwards. Yeah, my bad. Marker Bauer. That's why I was so confused. There he is. Watch list. 8.3 million. Let's see when he gets signed. All right, Marker Bauer signed 7.4. Oh, wow. Yeah, that... Yeah, Casper Stern, he would be unrosterable to me. He has two negative traits. 2.6 million. Actually, he's not unrosterable, to be perfectly honest. Because he can play defense, and he's at least like an 8-9 spot hitter with average speed he's rosterable but wow two negative traits that's unlucky wow oh yeah Pro tip, do not sign players who have two negative traits very often. Instead, sign players with two positive traits. I have no idea how traits factor into salaries. I just haven't learned enough about this system. I should have shown you in the beginning too, like all of the young players, but there are still some. So obviously these 19 year olds, I think 18 is the youngest age in the game. Maybe it's 19, but here are some of the players the game generates. We have Marigold Handshake, Uriah Berry, Matteo Fiducci, Caden Valencia, Ricardo Alvarado. Oh, he's 27. He's not a rookie. I think a lot of the rookies already got signed. Want me to, I'm going to go through another year. Because I want to see the top rookies. I, I should have paid attention to that. I want to see a top rookie. Let's just sign Muffin Studwick. I have like no surplus now. Alright, skip to the uh, end of the offseason. Is there a draft? There's no draft. It's just all free agency based. So, let's, uh, let's sim this season out. What about RBI Baseball? I'm not very familiar with it. I have never played it. So let's sim the whole year.
Yeah, you could sign a bunch of rookies if you want. And one thing I think that's cool and is a nice element of strategy is that once you sign a player, their salary stays at its level until they opt for free agency. So you can go get the cheapest players and then develop them and they're still at that salary until they test. I made it. Okay. No player development then in the postseason. I didn't think you could. I really wish this had year-to-year -year stats, though, where you could check, like, you know, this player has 400 home runs in the franchise lifetime. That would be incredible. Now, you might say these averages are a bit high. Keep in mind, it's a 16-game season. Anybody on a hot streak? If you look at the MLB stats, like 16 games in, I think you'll see a lot of the same. Maybe not as many, like 500s or 480s. But all it takes is a player having a couple 5 for 5s and a 16 game sample is going to be very skewed. I gave away all the codes already, Zach. Sorry, I did that in the beginning of the stream. Let's see. View detail bracket. I'm not sure if there's a fast way to sim the playoffs. But I want to get to the next offseason quick. They are working on making stats save, really? Because that would actually be like a really big deal for me and my franchise. And I think it would make me want to do a longer season. For players to rack up more stats. And to have like, you know, keep track of like a record book or something. I don't know. I have no idea how they plan to support the game in future updates. And I'm not going to speculate on what they may do. Because I don't know. But I think the game we have right here is fun. There are a few more things I think that would make it just a little bit better. But I mean, this is their first crack at a franchise mode. They had season mode, which uh, was pretty simple. And they had in Super Mega Baseball 1, they had this interesting coach system that impacted player ratings. But nothing like this. This is deeper than they've gone before. And for a first try in Indie Studio, I think they did a pretty good job. First iteration. So when you're in the postseason, if you're going to sim, it does take longer, but that's hardly an issue. I'm sure most of you would be playing your postseason games. Oh, what do you think about our postseason series length? I'm thinking personally best of five, but best of seven is an option. All right, off-season time, everybody. I found a free agent first baseman named B. Butterman with 98 contact. Yeah, there are going to be some difference makers available. Let's see if I get a good one here. They've said on stream they plan on adding the franchise based on feedback. That would be amazing. That would be fantastic. Wow, there are some pitchers wanting 30 plus mil. All right, so let's go to the youngest players now that are available. Wow, I had four players. Do they opt out? This is scrolling a bit funny today. Like I had good control of it the other day. I think might be messed up right now but regardless i think on this menu it shows me how they left resign resign 
resign, resign. So I had four players opt out, okay? They were 30, 35, 34, and 29. Now I, I need to do this more often and I'll keep track of every retirement, every, you know, resignation. So I have a good understanding of it. This is good practice though for me to just get more familiar with the, the mode and show it off to you guys. Now, I don't think you can stagger the playoff series. I think it's all or nothing. So, they can all be seven game sets. They can all be fives. I don't think you can uh, make it variable. But 577 seven would be nice. Go MLB Sim style. Yeah, right now, I think that if they were to continue building off franchise mode, the things I'd want the most right now are box scores year over year stats and like a player card that shows what team they were on their stats and their career stats maybe a record book i think those would be really cool it would just add depth and then i think after that you get into like more performance based progression and regression just based solely on stats Yeah, if they build upon it, I think an already intriguing mode could get really, really special. That was my elbow. All right. So, youngest players in the league. We have a few 19s, 20s. Like, I'm not sure exactly who is actually a rookie. I just know that I don't recognize a lot of the names. I don't know if there's like more rookies, if there are more teams in the league. That's another thing that I just have to test and learn. So we have Luca McKee here, A, 19 years old, $26 million. This could be a player you build your team around. And he probably would not be asking for a, a new salary for a while, but it's already very high. So it's not like you're getting a deal. If you want a deal for a younger player, you have to go to like Sumner Morrison, who has good power, but nothing else is that notable. $6.8 million for a lefty power bat, an RBI man. Definitely worth it. How about Francesca Christensen? 85 contact at catcher. If you can get any hitting rating that stands out at catcher, I think you gotta make a move. Like she would be the player I'd want to sign here. Oops, I messed up my sorting. So Christensen, good fielding, good arm, good contact. Good player to have on the team. Yeah, a draft, I think, would be better than this system. I do agree. Especially, like, uh... Maybe if the salaries were a bit lower, too. At least for this system, high salaries for really good players make sense. So no one's just getting a bargain. But yeah, there is no system in place that's going to help a bad team get better. Or give them an advantage, like picking number one in the draft. So, I don't know if there's going to be a thing in this game where some bad teams just stay bad and the good teams stay really good. Because it's an even playing field. So, I guess we'll just have to see how it plays out. $32 milli. That's the lowest I've ever seen. 0.8. 39-year-old Clyde Oliver. I'd retire. All right, I want to see these rookies then. I'm going to just watch list anybody that's 21 or under. I want to see when they get signed because I imagine they go very quick, especially Ike Smith. So let's go next round. Six transactions. Hey, look, Benetti's acquired again. Leighton Benetti. 
Did he go to free agency again? I wish I could go through this a bit slower. I don't know if he got released. At any rate, all right, six transactions made. So the rookies, Ike Smith is still there. The demand is now below 30. I think the whole system here is like, if you want to go early on these players, you're going to overpay. Are you willing to do that? And most teams do not seem to be willing. Which I think offers some balance. All right, 27.4. It's already down a good bit. And, okay, still there at 25.6. Keep in mind, I am multiple years into the future, and I have no idea if the dynamics change once you're in, like, year five. I think I'm, like, in year six right now. Looks like the rookies are not going that fast in this draft, or this uh, offseason. Let's sim a few. All right, so we made it to round 10. Yeah, Ike Smith's still there. You can get him now for 20. It's dropped by a third. Down to 17. A couple of the rookies have been taken. I know the catcher that I thought was interesting was taken. When does Ike Smith go, though? Because he's kind of like the top-rated guy here. I think he just got signed. The halfway point here seems to be a turning point in round 16. Poor Bonetti just got cut again. There you go. Yeah, how many years have I simmed? Okay, five years I've simmed. And then as the offseason progresses, like, because of cuts to add players, like, interesting players become available. Okay, I wanted to check something out here. So, the, pay the budget stays the same, 140. The cap doesn't rise. Wasn't really expecting them to have a rising cap in a game like this in their first iteration or anything. I kind of wanted to see though how many players are on each team because I want to see like what the average would be so I know what's like an above average salary or below average I just want an idea so I'm signing random players I have no idea who I'm signing I want to say it's like 20 players or something. Yeah, I'm not actually using this franchise for anything. I'm just simming and testing stuff out. So 21 players per team. 
So if you were to to, va to divide your salaries accurate uh, evenly, it would be six point six million would be your average salary. So that's kind of the number you want to keep in mind when you sign a player below six point six, below average salary. When it's above, obviously. All right, everybody, that was a uh, look at franchise mode here in Super Mega Baseball 3. I think it's a lot of fun. I can't wait to get a series going, but I'm going to take some time in creating and customizing my league and getting it all set up so we can have ourselves a fun time on this game. Uh, if you got a code earlier in the stream, I hope you enjoy the game. Let me know how your experience with it goes. And uh, again, thank you Metalhead Studios for providing me those codes and uh, myself with a code as well. But that's going to do it for today, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. I'll have a Buccaneers video coming your way very shortly. And I will see you all again very soon. Have a great day, everybody. It was fun.